otherwise I may burn the apartment down. Okay, so that's melting. We're gonna chop up our bananas. I use a smaller knife, one that's a little easier to work with. And just chop them into little circles. Or you can be creative, chop them on angles. I don't care what you do. I'll chop them on angles. They're a little, a little bit on the sticky side. Banana, banana, banana. Yes, we have no bananas. Got it? Good. All right, our butter is melting, coming along nicely. Now, butter will burn quick, okay? Unless you're using clarified butter, which some chefs out there or any um, people who like to cook may be using, keep an eye on the butter. See how the, bu the bubbles are forming. I got the heat a little too high for this, so I'm going to turn it down. I don't want to burn the butter. If you do that, you got to go right back to start and scratch. So let that melt down a little. Okay, I'm going to add the bananas now that it's starting to bubble, uh, bubble up. Banana. Listen to the bananas sing to you as we saute them across the butter. All right. Now you may be asking me, what's so special about this dish? I don't know. It tastes good. That's what's so special about it. That's what's going to make the difference in really good cooking and mediocre cooking. It just tastes good. No matter what the ingredients are, you taste it and you like it. Well, it may not apply to escargot, but I don't know, maybe some of you out there like escargot. But we're going to let these bananas brown up a little bit. Keep cooking bananas. And I get a little spatula working. I'm working with a Teflon pan, so I don't want to have a sharp object. I don't want to scratch this pan, although you saw me using my tongs earlier. I cheated. Um, we'll let these brown up nicely. They're coming along. I can't tell you how good this smells. You're going to have to make this and find out for yourself. If you make one dish out of everything you learned today, make this. It's killer. Okay, our bananas are coming along nice. I got it just about on high. And I'm going to start sprinkling in some brown sugar now. Remember, I'm going to try to avoid the lumpy parts because they just um, won't dissolve in as well as this. But the brown sugar is going to actually emulsify the, um, the butter somewhat. It's going to thicken it up. And I'm adding about three teaspoons. That's one banana, four tablespoons butter, three teaspoons of brown sugar for now. We may have to, you know, work with it a little as we go. Now, if you notice, I don't know how well you can see it, but the butter is already starting to thicken up and the brown sugar starting to caramelize slightly. That's exactly what you want to happen. Look at this. It's so good. I make this with peaches. It's unbelievable. Any fresh fruit. Okay, we're just about done, and the most important ingredient for this, but you really don't even need it, but it really makes this one unique and stand out on its own, is I add a little bit of Grand Marnier. If you don't have Grand Marnier and you want to use a little bit of Amaretto, that's fine. I like the uh, after-dinner cordial because they're really, they're really intense in flavor. You can use um, an almond extract or something along those lines, but for some reason the alcohol, the, uh, the cordials themselves, really kick butt in this recipe and the nice thing is the alcohol cooks off so if you're concerned about drinking and eating or alcohol is an issue with you don't worry about using it you're going to get a lot of flavor the alcohol is going to cook off and you're not going to have the problem um good old grand manier one of the best things made from an orange a product of france where would we be without the french as far as cooking is concerned i'm not even putting in maybe a tablespoon at most you're mixing in an orange liqueur with a banana, so you don't want to kill the banana, but a combination of the two is excellent. And there we go. We'll saute this around. I kind of like that motion right there. Um, put that on a low heat. Or actually, turn it off for a minute. Vanilla ice cream. French vanilla ice cream. Don't get a cheap ice cream because you can really tell the difference in this dessert. Um, I got one of your more popular varieties you can find in any supermarket. If you want to go out and buy Ben and Jerry's from Vermont or you want to get Steve's, whatever you like is great. I got French vanilla ice cream. I like this variety. It has a lot of bean structure in the ice cream. And we're going to scoop out a couple of little scoops here. We don't want to go too heavy on it. Remember, we just ate a pretty big meal. We've had some wine and some beers. And uh, you're moving on to your last course of the evening. 
is this beautiful vanilla ice cream and banana flambe or banana compote or bananas hernandez you can call it because that's the name of the guy who taught me this recipe put the ice cream away we got our bananas we're going to flash it real quick once again in the pan get the temperature up now you see why i told you not to make this dish until i told you uh earlier that you want to get it done at the last minute right before dessert if you're serving a uh, dark roast coffee or espresso or cappuccino or even regular coffee get that done first do this last and it is ready we're going to turn off the heat we're going to shovel excuse me spoon a little bit of this uh, beautiful compote on top of the ice cream this is to die for can't tell you leave a little bit of the juice off there we go, we'll sprinkle a little bit on there, and that's it as far as that. Um, we'll top these off with a little bit of sugar cookie. Hey. Put them right in there with it, and voila. Bananas Hernandez, that's the name I just invented on the show. You heard it for the first time. All right, let's do a little recap here. We have dessert. We have our entree. Chicken Florentine, sauteed chicken breast with fresh spinach hollandaise, new potatoes, boiled, lightly dusted with fresh herbs. We have an excellent pasta salad. This is great in the summertime. There's no main issues in this. You can make this up way ahead of time. Take it out on a picnic, put it in Tupperware. It's ready to roll. If you've got the nice leaf lettuce as an underliner, it just really makes it you know, a little more presentable. I got red and yellow and orange peppers on top as a garnish. And last but not least, Southwestern Pizza. One with um, cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack, and salsa. Nothing else. Well, we got barbecue sauce, excuse me. The other one with barbecue sauce, cheddar, and Jack. We have three different peppers and onions. Last but not least, a lot of people say, I don't know what to drink with this. I don't know what goes with what. Um, I'm a big fan of California wines. If I'm going to go out and buy wine, I'm going to support our uh, wine growers out on the West Coast. I've been out there a few times. And let me tell you something. The product that's coming out of Napa Valley is unparalleled to, to just about anything that you can get today. The prices are a little more affordable. I'm not saying that the wines from Europe are bad. I'm buying American. Um, this Farniente, Napa Valley, this is a nice selection. It goes great with a chicken dish. You might want to try this with the entree. Um, I have a Robert Mandavi Chardonnay, probably one of the most uh, hospitable people I've met in Manapa Valley, and I actually had the uh, pleasure of spending some time with the whole family when they were in Boston a while ago. They actually put out some of the best wines in Napa Valley today. It's very affordable. It's excellent. This goes great with chicken, with fish, with pasta, um, anything you like. Of course, what would Southwestern be without your Southwestern beer? If you don't like beer and you like wine, then drink your wine. Drink anything you like. I'm just offering suggestions. Um, I hope you enjoyed working with me today. My name's Tim Curry. This is Cooking Single. And um, hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be able to see you next, next time and uh, try something different. I'm open to suggestions if there's something you would like to see. Or if you have any um, comments or criticisms or anything you saw today that maybe you didn't agree with or suggestions or maybe um, you'd like to offer some ideas, write to us at BNN and um, we'll roll the address for you at the end of the tape. Um, if you would like some recipes from today's show, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Cooking Single with Tim Curry, care of BNN. Again, watch for the address at the end of this tape. And uh, I'll be happy to tell you how to make this stuff at home. I look forward to seeing you again. My name's Tim Curry, and welcome to Cooking with Single. Um, no, welcome to Cooking Single. And have a great day. Thanks a lot.